It's beginning Christmas. mid and that is that winter sport back. Hello again, everybody. I'm Evan Massoud. Welcome inside the Luke Urban Fieldhouse at BMC Durfee High School as we kick off winter sports with girls hoops. Somerville visiting Durfee on this Friday the 13th in December. I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. We hope that you tuned in for our live coverage of our annual Thanksgiving Day football game between Durfee and New Bedford uh, really had a great time co-oping with New Bedford Cable Access, New Bedford Cable Network, and uh, their crew, their broadcasters. So uh, I hope that you enjoyed the broadcast as much as we did. But now that's in the rearview mirror as uh, we're ready to tip things off here to begin the season. This is opening night for Girls Hoops in 2019-2020. These Somerville Highlanders, take a look at their starting five. Number three, a captain, Jemima Joseph. Number five, Nevea Sanchez. Number 21, a captain, Jill Hutchinson. Number 22, Elizabeth McEwen. And number 24, Bridget Frazier. <laughs> Lady Hilltoppers starting five as we got a foul right out of the gate here. Excuse me, a timeout. Wow, eight seconds in. And the visitors use a timeout right at the start of the game. It'll give us a chance to run down the Durfee starting five. Number two, Captain Mackenzie Carrero. Number 10, Captain Samantha Soares. Number 15, Captain Catherine Callahan. Number 22, Landry Karen. And number 32, Cameron Lewis. Now one name there for the Hilltoppers, Landry Karen. She is a freshman, one of three freshmen on this Durfee team. As it's really very balanced up and down the roster between seniors, juniors, sophomores, and freshmen. It's pretty much even keel, even distribution. Uh, but Landry is the daughter of former Durfee great and uh, Durfee AD and Durfee coach. So player, coach AD, Jeff Karen, of course, no stranger to Durfee High School's athletic program. So uh, Landry as a freshman starting tonight on opening night. Coach Smith said that she's had great practices to start the year. And she earned her spot in the starting lineup. Now Cameron Lewis gets Durfee on the board on the other side. To open the scoring was Nevea Sanchez, number five. So tied at two as we start off the new year. Hilltoppers have four captains. The fourth captain uh, who is not in the starting lineup is O'Shea Sterling. She's also a senior. She's number 12. We'll see her with some playing time tonight as well. At least we expect to. And for the Highlanders, their third captain, I only mentioned two because two were starting. Their third captain is Silena Scott. Number two, she's also a senior. She's a guard and uh, expect to see her as well in the game. Our first foul came on Durfee's number 22. That was, that was Karen picking up her first. And the first for the team. A little different vantage point for you tonight too. Usually we're behind the benches. Um, but wanted to change it up. This gives us a little more of a centered shot. It's actually a little bit higher, I think, too, although these bleachers are not fully extended. Um, they will be for boys' games, but girls' games, we don't always extend them all the way. But regardless, um, I think we're going to try to do a few more games from this side this year. I really like the vantage point. We always have fans. You get to see the players. Um, we did one game from here last year, and it was actually when we co opted with Dartmouth Cable, Dartmouth Community TV, um, who we're hoping to again in January when the Indians come here for boys basketball. That was thrown away, taken by Catherine Callahan to the basket. She's in the books, and it's 4-2 Durfee. Um, so, yeah, we're hoping to do that with DCTV as well. Um, those of you who followed our coverage in, in the fall, uh, you may recall a couple live games uh, streaming on Facebook that DCTV provided to us that we shared uh, on the Fred TV sports page because I happen to be calling those games out in Dartmouth. So um, they've uh, been good to work with. I've been doing games for them on the side for the last now, um, gosh, I started it was 2014 January. So going on almost six years uh, doing games for them on the side. 
And uh, now that Dartmouth is a conference opponent for Durfee, you know, it makes all the sense in the world, and they're great to work with too. So um, nice to, you know, get together with different stations. You know, we worked with Somerset as well. Cameron Lewis with her second basket. Uh, but, you know, Somerset Berkeley Raiders, Blue Raiders TV. One of our former instructors is over there leading the charge now, Tara Peckham, and we've co-opted and did some stuff with them and her students and our students and uh, also hoping to do that this winter as well. So good things, uh, at least in terms of basketball here. We will have hockey before Christmas on the schedule as the Prenda Cup kicks off next Wednesday. And um, for the first time in a couple years, Durfee's playing Diamond in the opening round. So really excited about that to see both Fall River schools square off. Um, the bad news for Fall, Fall River fans is that only one team gets to advance. So the odds of, uh, or the chance of a Durfee Diamond final, not gonna happen. Um, but nice to see them in the opening round. So we will have coverage of that game. And then next Thursday, Durfee boys are home. They'll host Conley from right across the street. Billy Shea brings the Cougars into town, or into the field house, I should say. Um, so we'll get to see all three Durfee teams here uh, before Christmas break, which kicks off Friday the 20th, next Friday, a week from tonight. Travel called on the three ball from Jemima Joseph. Durfee will take it back the other way. JV had a blowout. Lady Hilltoppers JV squad took care of the Lady Highlanders 59 to 23. A big win for the home team. That's going to be for three. It's going to be long right into the hands of Catherine Callahan as Mackenzie Carrero couldn't get it to go. And then taken away by Joseph. Going to the hoop. Foul on the floor. And it'll be Durfee's third. Samantha Soros picking up her first. So three fouls for the Hilltoppers in three minutes of play. Jumper from the free throw line off the glass, no good. Hilltoppers come away with the rebound. Kicked across the court to Shailen Cruz Salgado and she gets called on a travel. Feed to the corner there to Bridget Frazier. Back to Joseph, it's kicked out of play. And Durfee ball. Talk to both coaches pregame. Coach Smith for the Hilltoppers, his second season with the team. Uh, very excited about tonight. Very optimistic about tonight said that practice this last week has been outstanding. Oh, there's a foul. Jill Hutchinson with the push there. Her first foul, it's the second team foul. Callahan will inbound here, gets it to Carrero, uh, but Coach Smith Again, you know, he said practice this week leading up to opening night tonight has been fantastic. And um, he said, you know, one of the big reasons is they've seen some action. The jitters, he says, should be gone. Oh, kept in by Cruz. Diving effort, blocked in front by Samantha Soares. The three ball gets off. Rebound to Joseph and a foul. Wow. Some tremendous play from the Lady Hilltoppers before the foul. They're going to pick up their fourth. Um, you know, I asked Coach, I said, any jitters? You know, it's opening night. What's your message to the girls? They hit the court for the first time. You 
And he said, uh, well, there really should be no jitters. He says we had a five-team scrimmage last week out at Weston High School. Weston um, is up in the Boston area. Nice feet underneath. No good, though, for O'Shea Sterling as we're still stuck on 6-2 to two the score. Joseph for three off the back of the rim into the hands of that was a McEwen, no good. A couple attempts there for the Highlanders. They can't get it to fall. But, uh, you know, Durfee girls, they saw some pretty quality teams out at that scrimmage, including Weston High, who hosted uh, Wilmington, Dover Sherman, one of the very good programs uh, in terms of athletics in the uh, East Coast here. Frazier's first foul, third for the Highlanders. So... Needless to say, coach feels that the Lady Hilltoppers are ready to rock tonight. There should be no jitters. Callahan misses the first, as it's the first trip to the line for either side. All six fouls to this point have been on the floor. This one gives Durfee a seven to two lead as Callahan went one for two at the line. Swatted at, oh, that's gonna be a tough foul. As the ball went away from Joseph, I, I mean, I didn't. Usually, you can hear a slap. I didn't hear a slap with the headset on here, um, but happened happening right in front of us. It sure looked like she got ball on that. And needless to say, Driffy's fifth foul here of the first half in only five minutes of play. A lot of fouls early for the Hilltoppers. Now on the other side, pretty cool storyline for the visiting coach, the Highlanders head coach, Sheila Freitas Haley. So Sheila actually attended Durfee High School. She's a former Hilltopper. And she was the first Lady Hilltopper to score 1,000 points. That happened back in 1993. So really, Cool story here that we have uh, a former Durfee great here in the building coaching against her former team. Um, so thrilled to welcome back Coach Freitas to the field house. It was nice to meet her pregame. And it turns out, ironically, you know, many of you who know of Durfee um, remember a Mr. Massoud in guidance. Well, he's my dad's cousin. Uh, Donald, and uh, he was actually Sheila's guidance counselor here. So, uh, small world, <laughs> small world to say the least. And Donald uh, retired actually in the spring prior to my coming uh, here to Durfee. So, but he was here for years in the guidance department. Rebound to Joseph. No shot, foul on the floor, and it'll be Durfee's seventh foul. We're not out of the first yet. O'Shea Sterling. Okay, uh, one and one. Yeah, I was going to say it's, not, it's on the floor, but one and one. I was wondering why they were inbounding with the seven fouls. It's a one and one situation. The shot is no good from Joseph, who took it. So Drifty continues to lead in what has been a very low scoring first six minutes. Seven to three, the score. Off the foot and out of play it goes. It's Frazier. Timeout for Coach Smith and the Hilltoppers. He uses his first. I asked Coach Freitas about her team. She said last year, a really tough year, 3 and 13, um, and she lost. 
about three of their starters due to injury, and of course that never makes it easy. But she did say, you know, there's a lot of returning players. She has um, five juniors on the team. Those five juniors were sophomores a year ago, and they all basically had to step up because of the injuries. So they got some good vars uh, varsity minutes. Bad news is, you know, again, you know, the inexperience, unfortunately, kind of hurt the Highlanders a little bit last year. But it does help them coming into this year because now they've had those minutes, which is always, you know, so beneficial. You know, and that's how you know we look at Durfee. As I said, three freshmen on this starting roster, the varsity roster, to start the year: Lauren Kucher, Landry Karen, and Jada Holly. Jada is actually the sister of Javon Holly. You may remember that name from last year's basketball season and from football um, this year and last. Uh, Javon had a fantastic freshman season, uh, both out on the turf and here in the court. Three is good at the buzzer from Shaylin Cruz Salgado. Now a three on the other side. That's going to be off the rim. Joseph with the rebound, contested, puts it up, and gets two points back. So it's 10 to 5. How about that three from Cruz Salgado? Good feed now underneath to Sterling. Didn't get a good look there, though. Wasn't able to square up. Highlanders put up another three. No good. That was Hutchinson. The rebound went to Frazier. And it looks like Durfee's going to pick up their eighth foul. Cameron Lewis picking up her first foul. Eighth foul for the Hilltoppers, and Frazier will head to the line one and one. First one is good. That makes it a four-point game again. Both free throws good. So interesting how that all worked out. It was 10 to three after the three ball as the shot clock was expiring, and now with 60 seconds to play, a 4 nothing run for the Highlanders. And it's 10 to 7. Hutchinson with her second foul. Fourth team foul for the Highlanders. 12 fouls here in the opening quarter. That's a lot of fouls. A lot of miscues. And you know, sometimes that happens. Opening night. tend to see more mistakes the first couple games of the year than you do uh, you know, down the stretch. Joseph trying to go coast to coast after the errant pass. Can't get it to go. That time she does on the second chance effort. And it is 10 to 9. Six nothing run for the Highlanders. Good pass underneath to Cameron Lewis, who called for it. She called for it, got herself open. The pass was in traffic, and she still was able to scoop it up out of the air and put it back. Well done. Ninth foul for Durfee. This one's on Cruz. And Joseph at the line. She missed her first free throw. One and one opportunity again for her. That one no good as well. Everybody kind of was late breaking. No foul, I believe uh, may have been a lane violation there. Final second, airballed off the <laughs> off the glass, going for the Hail Mary as the buzzer sounds. It's 12 to nine after one quarter. Hilltoppers with the three point lead after eight minutes of play. And really the difference is that three ball that we just saw 
from Cruz Salgado over the last two minutes, right out of the timeout. Leading scorer to this point, Cameron Lewis, who netted the last field goal of the quarter down underneath the layup. She's got six points. Behind her is Jemima Joseph, one of the three captains for the Highlanders. She has four points, thanks to her couple of uh, couple of layups down this end of the court. So it'll be interesting to see here as final three seconds of the break in between quarters. Ready to rock here with quarter number two, Bridget Frazier. Oh, she was going to inbound. Then Joseph was going to inbound. Then they got the bad news that it's Jerfy Ball. <laughs> so Callahan's going to inbound. Um, be interesting to see how the Hilltoppers, these fouls, come back to bite them here in the second quarter. Already one away from the team limit to start the second quarter. That's not a good place to be. Out of play it goes with 17 seconds on the shot clock. Evan Mashud with you for girls basketball as we open the winter sports season here on Fred TV. Durfee hosting Somerville in game one. Well, Callahan wanted to take the jumper, quickly defended by Hutchinson. That was blocked. Landry Karen couldn't get it to go. Now to Joseph to tie it up. The outside shot not working well for Jemima Joseph here in the first half. And I think this is going to be Durfee's 10th. Cameron Lewis picking up her second foul, 10th foul for the team. That's the team limit. So here you go, 7-19 to play in the half. And it's going to be two shots the rest of the way for the Highlanders. Frazier at the line. She's two for two in one trip. Three for three on the night. Four for four. Clutch shots at the line to make it a one point game. Down the court, pass to Karen. Kicked out to Carrero, back to Lewis. Fights for those two points, able to bank it in again. She's up to eight points. Good pass down to Frazier. Frazier is fouled. Lewis is going to pick up her third. She's going to probably have to come out and take the seat. And let's see. Lewis is still out there. But she'll be coming out in a moment. My guess. Samantha Soares waiting to check in. Two more shots for Frazier. So Soares is in. Lewis will take a seat. Meanwhile, Frazier, 5 for 5 at the line. Man. Smooth as silk. No pressure at all. I want her at the line if the game's on the line. <laughs> that shot, no good. Travel, yep. See, Hutchinson kind of got backed up and she lost her footing. So a turnover for the Highlanders. Callahan thought about an open three going underneath 
and Karen is fouled. Fifth foul for the Highlanders, second on Hutchinson. And Karen will take two shots. First trip to the line in her high school career. <laughs> Quick substitution for the Hilltoppers as they bring in Deslin Thorng. That one off the front of the rim, but the rebound to the Hilltoppers. Cruz kicks it out. Carrero with a rainbow three, but it's long and off the mark, and then hits the play clock. No good. Oh, out of bounds. Durfee ball as Frazier kind of slid out of bounds thanks to the defensive pressure from the Hilltoppers. They continue to lead here by just the one point, 14-13. Back outside, that's for three, gonna be very long. Soros couldn't put it up, fed down the court, great pass. Silena Scott. Soros picks up her second foul. And the first free throw from Scott, who just recently came into the game, has no points to, to this point, misses the first. Second one is good, and we are tied at 14. Hilltoppers need to get the offense going. Missing some shots here. That one, an air ball as well. Never hit the rim. Joseph storming through traffic. The foul and the basket. And Coach Freitas celebrating with her Lady Highlanders, who just retook the lead for the first time since the first minute of play. So the basket, plus one. Landry Karen picking up her third foul. That no good, kick back out. Jumper, no good, and the Hilltoppers have it. Carrero fouled. Lauren Farina picking up her first foul. Sixth foul for the team. Two shots from Mackenzie Carrero. First one no good. Hilltoppers are just one for five at the line here in the first half. Second one no good either. Great hustle there from Scott, able to get that ball back. Joseph, very physical. She draws the foul. Deslin Thorng gets called on the foul, and it's two shots for Joseph.
Joseph has been to the line three times, hadn't hit one until that point to make it 17 to 14. Both shots good. And it's 18 to 14. Good passing, Carrero gonna take the jumper. That's long. Inbounding pass, juggled by Farina. Can't hold on to it. Oh, that was close to a travel on the other side, too. Not called against Durfee. Sure looked like one. Good passing around the horn. You get it to Soares. Soares throws it away. Timeout called by Coach Smith after the Hilltoppers get it back. But really... Pretty ugly start to the second quarter, which has also been very long. Seems like every possession, a foul is being called at the basket. So not clean basketball either through these first four minutes of the second quarter. Only two baskets from the field between both sides. And uh, really the free throws are the difference here in the second quarter. Eight free throws, uh, free throw chances here for the Highlanders, they've made seven of them. Durfee, four free throw chances, they've missed all four. That's the difference in the game right there. Gotta make those shots. Hilltoppers inbound the ball. Long three, no good. The rebound goes to the Highlanders. Down the court they go. Hutchinson pulls up. Tipped into the hands of Farina. Out of play it goes. Joseph is going to inbound the ball now with 21 shots remaining on the play clock, the shot clock. Frazier back to Hutchinson. Calling for it is Farina in the middle. They go out to Frazier. No good. Tipped and into the hands of Samantha Soares for the rebound. Almost lost it, Callahan reels it back in. <laughs> Hilltoppers with the violation down in the paint. Loose ball. Hilltoppers really smothering there. The Highlanders trying to get the ball back, could not. Weaving through traffic is Nevea Sanchez, loses the ball. And now the Hilltoppers trying to take it back the other way. It's Carrero who gets the feed. Back to her for three. Joseph had the hands in there, it's long again. And Carrero seemed to be annoyed after that shot. Not sure if it's because of the miss or if it's because Joseph had her hands up in her face. But I don't think there was any contact. 
Joseph taking a seat on the bench as she was subbed out. Frazier spins, trying to put it up on the second chance. Hilltoppers get the rebound. Well, that's a travel, absolutely. Kind of just got stood up, <laughs> kind of took a step. I'm not trying to make, not trying to laugh at it. It just kind of is one of those like, uh-oh, where do you go? You know, you kind of lose your footing. You got stood up there by your own teammate, and it's just like, if you don't mo make a step, you're gonna fall down. So, really, nothing that can happen. Nothing that could help you there. So, the tough, tough call on the Hilltoppers, but really one of those unavoidable travels, unfortunately. Well, the jump ball gives Durfee possession. So we now have a functioning jump ball light on our new scoreboard that you've seen, the desk, the new scorer's table. I think it's a little shorter than the old one, but the video screen's pretty wild. And uh, in future games, you will see our Fred TV logo on that board as well. You're gonna see some advertisement from some of the athletic department sponsors just recently approved at um, our latest school committee meeting here in the city. Thrown away, another turnover for the Highlanders. Unfortunately, the Hilltoppers not taking advantage of it. Soares gets the pass after Cruz double pumped and thought about the three. Instead, thrown down into the paint, now kicked back out, almost lost. The Hilltoppers probably should have lost that one. Can't. Uh, Landry Karen, she got the pass, kicked it back out. Soares takes the shot. They're calling the foul on the floor, and it'll be the Highlanders' seventh. This is the first for Sanchez, seventh for the team, and a one and one for the Hilltoppers. It'll be Soares at the line. She has no points in this first half. And the Hilltoppers on a bit of a drought here. First shot is good, and that'll give her a second. That's Durfee's first point since Cameron Lewis had the layup at the start of this quarter. Shot was no good, the rebound to Callahan. Kicked out to Landry Karen who has her first high school basket. Joseph put it up as she just came back in. No good, the feed down to Carrero. Hutchinson there. Carrero can't get it to go. Again, didn't get a very good look at it, and Cruz, as she knows it, put her head in her hands. She's gonna pick up her third foul. And it'll be two shots for the visitors. It's going to be number 31, Catherine Cortez. Just recently into the game. Going to get two shots here. Her team leading by one. After Durfee got the last three points and now back up to a two-point lead after the first free throw. Coach Smith making some changes here. As Juliana Rivera into the game. Julian was on the team last year. Second shot, also good. So Cortez, two for two at the line. I also saw O'Shea Sterling check back in for Durfee. She's got that pass, couldn't handle it. Luckily, the favorable bounce to Soares, all the way back around the other side of the court to Callahan, who drops it off to Rivera. And it's taken away on Carrero's pass by Joseph, who will take it to the basket herself for the two points and the five point lead as we're under a minute here in the first half. Rivera throws it away.
you know, so often we say, why didn't why didn't they pass the ball? Why did they take the shot? In that case, I I have to say Rivera. I mean, I know she just came in, but looked like she had an open lane. There was really no need to pass the ball. I would take it to the basket, just like that. Doesn't fall though. Callahan back down the court. Hutchinson just sits there and waits. Back to back baskets for her, and in the blink of an eye, this lead. That was cut to one, it's now nine points. The Hilltoppers have gotten sloppy in the offensive attack. The Highlanders taking advantage of it. That's no good and Durfee's gonna go into the locker rooms down 26 to 17, a really tough second quarter for the Hilltoppers. And not a good way to end it. Hilltoppers were just two from the field in that second quarter. The one free throw, one for six at the line. That's gonna hurt you. Other side, the Highlanders. Only four from the field, but it was the free throws that saved them. Two, four, six, eight. Nine out of 10 at the line. I said it before, I'll say it again. You gotta make the shots when you have them. And the Hilltoppers offense struggling. Uh, and then again, you know, not helping themselves during that final minute. Cost them six points. Tough way to go into the locker rooms. Well, we will be back with the second, uh, second half, excuse me, after this. We're gonna have you uh, take a look during halftime in the city here. December is the season of giving, and Laura Ferreira, Director of Traffic and Parking here in the city, and the Traffic Department has uh, begun their ticket amnesty program once again. So we have that PSA for you now, followed by a uh, piece that we ran during the Children's Parade, the Christmas Parade back on December 7th, our city Christmas tree, the cutting down of the tree, placing it at Government Center. We got to speak to a few individuals uh, who were, were a part of putting it up, the donators as well. So pretty cool pack that my colleague Pamela and Martin and I uh, worked on about a week or so ago. So we'll leave you with those two pieces here during halftime, and we'll see you on the other side with the third quarter. Happy Holidays. It's that time of year again for the Amnesty Program. My name is Laura Ferreira and I am the Director of Traffic and Parking for the City of Fall River. The Amnesty Program will be running through the month of December. Anyone with outstanding parking tickets that have accumulated late fees can come into the Traffic Department and those late fees will be dismissed. Having your plate number and a ticket number will be very helpful to the office. It is crucial that you resolve your unpaid parking tickets. Otherwise, at the registry, you will be unable to renew your license or your registration. If you have any concerns or issues regarding your late fees, please contact the traffic department at 508-324-2123 and we will try to assist you. Thank you. Members of the Unitarian Church on North Main Street planted a sapling in 1990 to celebrate Arbor Day. And look at it now. Church moderator Eric Darling said, as children are known to grow, so too does a tree. And what was the size of the tree then? About three feet maybe, at tops. <laughs> Is it posing some kind of hazard or inconvenience to it's, the church at this time? It's starting to at this point. It's actually encroaching on the building and the fence and it's just getting too big. It's gonna continue to get big. It's been growing about a foot a year or a little bit more than a foot a year. And if it goes much longer, we're gonna to have to have it taken down anyway. But this way, at least the rest of the city gets to enjoy it again uh, for the holiday season. When you see it standing here is one thing, but when you see it on a truck and then in front of government center, it just looks so much bigger. It's just a perfect tree, really. Uh, usually every tree we find has kind of a dead spot and that'd be the side that we put up against government center. Uh, this tree actually has no dead spot. So it's almost a shame uh, when you lay it down on a trailer that we're gonna break some branches, but that's uh, part of the deal. 
The 42-foot blue spruce is so ideal, so shapely, so full, it's a shame to see it go, according to John Perry, Director of Community Maintenance. I've had my eye on this one for a few years, uh, but we finally got it. So uh, we find the tree and then we start to logistically look at what we're dealing with. Are there overhead wires, uh, traffic concerns? Um, you know, the trip to government center is the, is the most difficult part most of the time. Hudon Crane operators give their time every year to hoist and move the tree to its place of honor at government center. This one weighs a whopping 6,000 pounds. It's a good time, you know, I ride the tree down to government center, you get to see all the people come out and, and look at it in amazement, see a tree that size. The tree is secured with a floor brace and ties. But this is a good full tree. This is probably one of the fullest trees and perfect shape tree to decorate. So I think it's going to look nice this year. And we've been doing, I think, this is our 11th year, putting the tree up. So we pretty much got down to a science now. This operation, though somewhat risky, plays out like a carefully timed dance, according to Brian Bishop of Bishop Electric. I grew up in this city, and everybody can do a little bit giving back. It helps a lot. And it's, it's for the kids. Kids love to see the tree lit. Brian's crew looks forward to this job. They'll string more than 8,000 lights over two days. Welcome back. The inbounding pass signifies the start of the third quarter. The Hilltoppers with possession. Uh, big news there is that Cameron Lewis back into the game. She does have three fouls, but um, I think they really need her underneath, and the Hilltoppers really missed her in that second quarter. How to play it goes. Evan Massoud with you on Fred TV as we kick off the winter sports season here. And it was the Lady Highlanders with a tremendous second quarter. Hilltoppers led after one, 12 to nine. They didn't relinquish that lead until about halfway through the second quarter. Durfee got it back to 18-17, the deficit, and then in the last 60 seconds, the Highlanders went to work, took advantage of some mistakes, and really started to try to put away the Hilltoppers. And that was all behind a 17-point second quarter for the visiting Highlanders. So it was a tough way to go into the halftime break for the Hilltoppers. They've come out here on a quick 4-0 run. Two layups, some better defense, that's for sure. A wide open to the basket. Frazier. Frazier had six points in the first half, but they were all at the line. That's her first from the field in the game. Thrown up to the corner, Soares, and Soares throws it away to Joseph, who has 10 points. The only uh, player for the Highlanders with 10 points. Frazier with eight. For Durfee, 10 points for Lewis on five layups. Another turnover, and the Hilltopper's gonna take it back. Out to Carrero. That's a travel, or are they gonna call a foul? There was a lot of steps there. Highlanders wanna travel, they're not gonna get it. Interesting. Nevaeh Sanchez picks up her second foul. It's the first foul here of the second half. Hilltopper's really had way too many fouls in that first half. That was 
a big problem for them as well. They had nine going into the second quarter. Not where you want to be. Carrero has missed a few shots tonight, including free throw shots. That's her first basket made. Look to build upon that here in the second half. So now one for three at the line. Make it two for four. So two made on that trip to the line. Down the court. The feed from Joseph was intended for Frazier and it was cut off. Looked like something Malcolm Butler did a few years ago for the Pats. Came storming in. Jake running camera tonight. Jake Fitzgerald says uh, we missed that. But, you know, Gilmore's done a pretty darn good job for the Pats. Guy has lived up to the billing, I think. Now the defense has been good. It's the, uh, the offense for the Patriots that really has struggled. It's just, and now at this week, news, obviously the Pats will have played by the time this aired, but uh, late week news is that Edelman is injured or has some kind of injury. And today, Friday, he did not speak to the media. And um, some of the reporters who were at practice said Edelman does not look good. He is hurt. So that's not good. Um, but, uh, you know, again, the game will have been played. So, you know, we'll see how they do or how they did. You know, you, you will have seen the game already. So we don't know, obviously, at the time of this game being played here. But the Pats will play the Bengals on Sunday. And uh, for those Pats fans like myself, hopefully if you're watching this game on replay here early, uh, early in the week, the Pats will have won on Sunday. <laughs> Some very sloppy play here. A lot of takeaways. A lot of uh, mishandling the ball for both sides in that 30-second period here on this side of the court. No fouls. That went out of play. And Joseph will inbound the ball. For Durfee, this is just the first of three consecutive games uh, to be played at home to open the season. Joseph falling back, gets it off. The jumper is good. Underneath to Lewis. Lewis puts it up in traffic, and she's up to 12 points, matching the game high 12 point total for Jemima Joseph. That three ball no good. Carrero with the rebound. A miss down this end for the Hilltoppers. And Durfee will next host, uh, next play on Tuesday. They'll host Somerset here. And then on Saturday, the 21st, they will uh, host New Mission High School. And I wish I could say I knew where that was. <laughs> I don't. Okay, here we go. Hyde Park. So they're out of Boston. <laughs> say, I've never heard of New Mission High School. Three from the corner short. Might have been tipped. And Shaylin Cruz Salgado with the ball. Looking for a lane, gives it to Thorng. Down to the court goes Carrero. The foul is going to be the third for the Highlanders. Third foul on Nevea Sanchez, who will take a seat. Drifty inbounds with a fresh 30 second clock. 
And uh, very impressed, I have to say, that in the first five minutes of this third quarter, the Hilltoppers with zero fouls. Hutchinson draws Durfee's first. The basket is good, and she'll take one shot. And as usual, I open my big mouth. Mackenzie Carrero's third foul, Durfee's first here. And the Highlanders with a chance at a three-point swing here on one trip down the court. You know, I said it, and I almost could, as I was saying the words, I said, you know, there's going to be one right here because she's breaking. It's one-on-one. -on -one. She's got the size advantage. Uh, it, it just, I just knew it was coming. Going to be Durfee ball here. So 33 to 25. Good pass again to Lewis. Six points in the first quarter. One basket in the second in limited time. And now six points here in the third quarter for Lewis, who has 14 points on the night. She's having a great opening night game here. Lewis for the... Hilltopper is just a sophomore. Taken. Full steam ahead. Thorn to the basket. It's good. She's seen limited time. That's her first basket of the night. It's a four-point game. Hutchinson. To Joseph. Tipped. Loose ball. Picked up by Lewis. Thorn with it. Going through traffic. Almost lost it as Frazier swatted away at it. And a timeout called by Coach Smith of the Hilltoppers with 24 seconds on the shot clock. He's used one timeout in each quarter tonight. Now well, for the Hilltoppers, uh, for boys basketball, they're starting the season with two road games. They are at Bishop Stang tonight. And then on Monday, they will be at Somerset Berkeley before they open their home schedule Thursday, which is the game we will cover um, right here on Fred TV against Bishop Conley. And then, of course, the Hilltoppers with the uh, Skip Carum tournament. We'll have that going on right after Christmas here in the Fieldhouse. And ice hockey, of course. Prenda Cup is Wednesday. And then the regular season, Durfee's first regular season game will be against Pentucket High School, Pentucket Regional, not Pawtucket, Pentucket. Fouled on the shot is Lewis. That's gonna be on Saturday the 28th. That'll be the first official regular season home game at Driscoll for the Hilltop. Uh, Hilltoppers. Pentucket is out of West Newberry Port. I, uh, West Newberry, excuse me. Another school I've never heard of. And they have the same logo as the Dartmouth Indians. <laughs> That's funny. That is funny. Lewis in her first trip to the line missed the first shot. The foul was on Joseph, her second. And the fourth for the team. Lewis misses them both. The rebound to Callahan, who just tries to scoop it up. Can't get it to fall, though. Joseph on the other end. Gets two back. Hilltoppers wrestling. We'll have a couple of meets here at home. And the foul. In fact, officially at the moment, three meets at home, a dual meet. Dual meet against New Bedford on January 8th. Tri-meet against Taunton and Everett on the 11th. 
of the month. And then a dual meet against BR on January 15th. Right now we will have both dual meets, again, which are conference meets against New Bedford and uh, BR. We'll have those few on Fred TV as well. Swim is going to be tough as uh, Swim is away because there is no pool <laughs> to be used here at Durfee. So um, that's going to make things challenging. But I believe, um, I believe we will have there's going to be, I think, one or two meets that are going to be at the Boys and Girls Club here in Fall River at that pool. Uh, so we will try to at least get to those. I haven't I do not know exactly when those are going to be, but when we do, we will add those to the calendar as well. So it'll be a busy winter, to say the least, here on Fred TV. And hoops here at the Fieldhouse basically every Friday until uh, February vacation, once we get back in January. So between girls and boys, conference games basically every Friday here. Third team foul for the Hilltoppers. It is Samantha Soares. Third foul. And it puts Frazier at the line shooting two. That is just her first miss tonight. She had been six for six at the line. That one is good. Quietly with nine points on the night for Bridget Frazier as we are down to the final minute here of the third quarter. Bad pass again from Cruz. And that's put up and in by Scott, her first from the field. And now the largest lead of the night, a 10 point lead. Carrero and Lewis standing here on the sidelines talking after Lewis saved it from going out of play and, and Carrero's having a conversation with her. Meanwhile, the ball's going the other direction. That's all discombobulated right there. Timeout for Durfee. As the lead again, Somerville up to 10 points now. Durfee had cut it back to four. And the Highlanders taking advantage of more mistakes. Well, over this next week, as we lead up to Christmas, uh, all kinds of concerts happening here in the city at our schools, uh, middle schools, elementary schools, the high school, which actually was uh, this past Thursday, the high school here, Durfee had their concert. All of those will be airing on Fred TV. So uh, be sure to check those out. And um, they also should be on our on-demand server actually as well. So uh, you should be able to find those on YouTube as well, as long as uh, YouTube's algorithm doesn't seem to have a problem with the music that's being played. <laughs> Seems to get stingier and stingier with every passing day. Um, but regardless, they will at least be airing on the channel throughout winter break and leading up to Christmas. So um, be sure to check those out. The Performing Arts Department, the musicians, our kids here in the city Always top notch. Foul. Mackenzie Carrero. Silena Scott, it's her first foul. Fifth for the team. And Carrero will go to the line for the third time. She's two for four. One for two on that trip. Three for six on the night. 50% at the line is Carrero. It looked like a double dribble there. 
called and Durfee will hope to take the last shot here of this third quarter. 9.7 seconds on the clock. Down 39 to 30. Now four seconds. The ball to Carrero, lets it fly. It's gonna be well long. Really not feeling the long ball tonight. Way too much on it for Carrero. She's put up a number of those and not one has fallen. That's very frustrating. Well, the Hilltoppers put up 13 points here in the third. Good improvement from what was only a five point second quarter, but not letting off the gas. The Highlanders matched it, 13 points, thanks to a little burst here down the stretch run of the third quarter. So they continue to lead the same deficit for the Hilltoppers. It's 39 to 30 in favor of the Highlanders heading into these final eight minutes of play. I'm glad Durfee's limited the fouls. They've been playing cleaner in that regard. But again, a lot of missed shots, a lot of missed opportunities. Yes, it's only opening night. I understand that. Um, but, you know, at the same time, some of the looks, some of the shots, really not even close. Um, and I'm not sure, you know, they may be feeling some pressure. Size-wise, the Highlanders definitely have the height advantage, I would say, over Durfee, which, you know, that seems to be the case these days more often than not. Um, Durfee tends to be the shorter team. Um, and I think it comes down to execution as well. And of course, you know, again, after one game here or just three quarters of game action, you know, you're going to learn as the season goes on, whether you're a senior or you're a freshman in the starting lineup, is that, you know, in-game adjustments are going to come easier as the season goes. So this just being the first 24 minutes that the Lady Hilltoppers have played this season, um, yeah, I'm sure there's, there's, of course, there's room for improvement, but... Um, it hasn't been a terrible game. Three ball, in and out. Andre Karen taking the shot from the corner. That three is no good. In and out for Sanchez from the same spot. Carrero, jumper for two. No good. Now Hutchinson for three. No good. So both sides putting up long balls. And both sides not able to get any of them to fall. Now the Hilltopper slow it down a bit. Callahan getting it to Carrero. This is the only time that we're going to see Somerville. Durfee is not going up to Boston. Somerville to see these Highlanders a second time. It's a one-shot deal here. We've seen this over the last few years with the boys as well. Joseph with the basket and the foul. Coach with the fist pump to make it 11. And Joseph will try to up that 11-point lead to 12. Samantha Soares picks up her fourth foul. Durfee's fourth of this half. Joseph, for her, this is her second and one situation, and she missed again. Second time she's missed tonight. Got her own rebound, and then the ball was lost. Out to Joseph, wants three, it doesn't look good. No, just off the, mon uh, off the mark. Back out to Hutchinson, no good. Joseph underneath for the rebound. Fouled, the basket is good. <laughs> 43 to 30. Fourth foul now for Landry Karen. Durfee's fifth. The 
Another miss on the end one. Joseph not very good from the line tonight. Better from the field. Just two for seven at the line. Lauren Farina picking up her second foul, sixth team foul. And Carrero will go to the line where she's netted her three points. This is her fourth trip. First one gets a little bit of gravitational pull and it does drop. Now for the Hilltoppers, more like we look at their schedule, uh, the one and dones. So they'll also tra they'll travel to North Quincy. That's a one and done, one shot deal as Carrero hit both free throws. Uh, that North Quincy trip is on December 30th. And then they'll also go to Westport on Saturday, September, excuse me, Saturday, uh, January, I don't know, I don't know one thing it's September here in winter sports. January the 11th of Saturday, they will travel to Westport. So four different teams that we'll see just once this season. Bank shot is good. Carrero's first from the field. Wide open down the other end of the court was Chiara Velotti. Somerville ball after it went out. 43 to 34, Durfee with four straight points here to cut it back. Five minutes to play in the game. Down into the corner, back the other way, and it is kept. Nice job by Karen, but she could not keep possession. Had to just keep it from going back court. It ends up being Highlander ball. They missed on two shots, and Durfee will get it back. Underhanded scoop for Callahan. I think she wanted a foul. May have been a little contact there. Down the other end of the court. Basket is good for Chiara Velotti. Just into the game. Karen across here to Callahan. Joseph takes it out of the air. Callahan gets the pass after it was stolen now by the Hilltoppers. They'll give it to Carrero, who's been trying for a three all night. No good again. That's gonna drop. Hutchinson with the basket. The Hilltoppers with the timeout. 47 to 34 is the score. We're going to step aside here in the timeout. We will be back with the final three minutes and 34 seconds right after this. Honor, courage, sacrifice, pride, our city. Fall River has traditionally been in the forefront of honoring our nation's soldiers sailors, marines, and airmen. Vietnam veterans took the initiative to secure rights to an 80% size replica of the Healing Wall for Veterans Bicentennial Park. The names of over 58,000 fallen heroes will be engraved on the 360-foot long replica wall. 
100% of the money raised benefits the building of our Vietnam Veterans Memorial Wall in Fall River. Help build our wall, which is scheduled to open in 2020. The meaning, the spirit, and the value of the wall is everyone's. Be part of this exceptional, once-in-a-lifetime project. To make a donation, please visit VietnamMemorialWall.org or connect with us at Facebook.com. We are back here at the Fieldhouse. Evan Massoud with you. Both teams out of the huddle after the Durfee timeout. Hilltoppers with too many players on the court. We saw this. <laughs> All right. So this reminds me back. Let's flash back a couple of seasons ago to boys basketball. Playoff game here at the Fieldhouse against Brockton. Third time we saw Brockton that season. I want to say it was 2017, 2016. Can't remember right off the top of my head. However, the same situation right there came into play and Durfee thought there should have been a tech. They didn't get it. And the reason that there was no tech here with too many players on the court is because the official was still holding the ball. The official had not handed the ball to the player to then inbound. Because once they do, right here, now the ball is in play. It's a playable ball. The official still had it. So we look back at that game. That was the same situation right here. Kind of gave me a little bit of a flashback in what was a very dramatic game and a crushing loss for Durfee that season. Seventh foul for the Highlanders. It is Sanchez's fourth foul and the Hilltoppers are gonna go to the line here for a one and one. Mackenzie Carrero. First shot, no good. Joseph gets the rebound. Pass down the court is picked in the air by Cruz Salgado. Fed to Lewis. Lewis driving the lane, can't get it to fall. That's a tough foul. I know Lewis, I know Lewis moved her feet, but man, I'm starting to see Joseph over these last couple minutes. That's that's twice now that she's literally put the shoulder down and almost like pile driven through the hilltoppers. Passed underneath. Foul. And Cruz will go to the line. First foul on Chiara Velotti. Eighth foul for the team. I believe it was during the basket, so yes. Two shots, first one. Well off the mark from Shaylin. That one no good either. Joseph with the rebound. Down the court, good feed to Sanchez. Puts it up, no good. Out of play. Lewis has had zero points in this fourth quarter. In fact, for Durfee, just one basket from the field, and that was Carrero, and her two free throws, which came before that field goal. So just the four points this quarter for the Hilltoppers, thanks to Mackenzie Carrero, who's Heading right to the basket that time as well. Puts it in for two. And despite having trouble from the field in the first three quarters, Carrero with nine points in the game. 
And Joseph there with that basket. A little bit much there from Joseph, who's getting a little cocky now. Clapping in the face and a little shove, a little nudge. Well, she has 20 points after that last basket. And she picks up the foul as well, and now she takes a seat. A buck 56 on the clock. I'd be surprised to see her come back in with the 15 point lead. Two shots for Carrero once again. Excuse me, that was a one and one. Foul was on the floor and she missed it. But the, uh, the Hilltoppers get it back. Three ball from Soares off the back of the rim. Take it away from Hutchinson. Ninety seconds to play. Tenth foul coming up here for the Highlanders. So Chiara Velotti, her second in limited time. So Durfee maxed out on fouls in the first half. Highlanders maxed out here in the second half. But the score tells the story as Lewis misses. 0 for 3 with that miss at the line here in the game. That one is good, so she does get one back. 15 points for her to lead the Hilltoppers. Stripped ball, another takeaway. You know, Durfee's defense has really gotten in there very well and taken a lot of balls away from the Highlanders, but it's the, the shooting, the ineffective shooting here on their offensive attack that really, I think, has failed them tonight because the defense has not been that bad. But the offense, yeah, just putting up, really, for lack of a better term, lame duck after lame duck. The, the shots are not there. And, I, you know, Somerville's missed a bevy of them as well. Um, it's not to say that shooting's been great on either side. Um, but, you know, when it's mattered, in terms of taking advantage of opponents' mistakes, Somerville's capitalized on Durfee's mistakes. Durfee has not capitalized on Somerville's mistakes. And that's why they're down by 14 points. Soares will get two back. That's just her first from the field. Another bad throw as we're in the final 10 seconds here. Out to the corner, a three for Pride. It is good! Cruz. She had a three back in the first, nothing since, and then picks up a three here. So it ends up being a nine point loss for Durfee, but um, those numbers ballooned a little bit at the end here as well. Because, you know, the Highlanders had rest taking their starters out and kind of backed off a little bit. Um, it's, it's one of those games that, you know, this obviously, it's first night, opening night, this rushed. I think Durfee, uh, you know, they end up losing by nine. I think Durfee will definitely get better as the season goes on. Uh, they have some experience with some of their upperclassmen. They got some youth that I think can make a difference that coach is very excited about. Um, so I, I think this Durfee team will be okay as the season goes on. Be interesting to see how they do against Somerset uh, next week. So that'll, uh, that, you know, that's always a big game against their Taunton River rivals, if you will. Somerville looking good here. Again, taking advantage 
the big player, Jemima Joseph, one of the captains, 20 points in the game. Definitely a playmaker. She'll be leading this team here for uh, Coach Sheila Freitas Haley, making her return to the field house here after many years. Returning here now, coaching for Somerville. She's been coaching at Somerville since 2012. So we v wish the former Hilltopper best of luck in the rest of her season. We won't see Somerville again. So we wish the Highlanders the best of luck the rest of the way as they make their way back up to the Boston area. For Durfee, we will see them again in the new year in terms of girls' hoops. All right, that's it from the Fieldhouse. Final score one last time. Somerville 51, Durfee 42. For Jake Fitzgerald behind the lens, I'm Evan Massoud saying so long from the Fieldhouse.